You're watching Tag TV. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages, and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained today, the country is taking huge strides in the path of development. Hello, I'm your host, Skyrim Zimik, and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give you a glimpse of a country's diversity. Today we will take you to experience the nomadic life at the easternmost Changtang region of Ladakh where recently a two-day festival was organized to highlight its distinctive culture and speed up the development initiatives in the region. The lifestyle and culture of Changpas, which is a nomadic community of pastoralists living in Changtang Plateau of Ladakh, has remained unexposed since long. Even after being known for making the world's finest pashmina, this semi-nomadic tribe never got the due attention. But recently, the region grabbed eyeballs as it played host to the two-day Ladakh Nomadic Festival at its Korzopu area. Organized by the Ladakh Cultural Academy in collaboration with Ladakh Tourism Department, the event was inaugurated by the Ladakh's Lieutenant Governor R.K. Mathur. While addressing the gathering of villagers, LG assured to provide the best of facilities to the people of the region. जो नोमेडिक लाइफस्टाइल है उसको जिंदा रखना है उसको बढ़ाना है मैं ये मानता हूं कि उसको प्रिजर्व करने के लिए और बढ़ाने के लिए पहली चीज सभी यहां के निवासियों को बेस्ट ऑफ एजुकेशन बेस्ट ऑफ हेल्थ बेस्ट ऑफ एनिमल केयर घरों में बिजली हो पानी हो इंटरनेट की सुविधा हो ये सारी हमें उपलब्ध करानी है विद द लाइफ स्टाइल ऑफ चंगपा ट्राइब ऑन डिस्प्ले द इवेंट एम टू ब्रिंग द डिस्टिंगटिव कल्चर ऑफ चंगथंग रीजन ऑन द टूरिस्ट मैप ऑफ लद्दाख अलॉन्ग विद कीपिंग इट प्रिजर्व फॉर यंगर जेनरेशन On the sidelines of the festival a number of events were held that beautifully presented the music and dance of the tribe. Activities ranging from wool spinning to yak dance and traditional marriage ceremony also mesmerized the tourists who came to visit the region from across the country. nomadic festival this is uh, something very interesting because uh, the way they dress and the food and uh, the nomadic culture and the temperature everything is bahut humko bahut different lagte hai so i say uh, i have to congratulate to uh, the people who organize this because it, it's not easy in this terrain it is um, high altitude hai Changpas migrate four times a year and preach frugality. Moreover, as they have their makeshift camps at unsympathetic altitudes, they have learned to live in harmony with the unpredictable nature of the wild winds and heavy snow showers besides sharing space with wild animals. India is a country where Sufism has not just flourished but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. Even today, the teachings of these saints inform the lives of people and act as a guiding force for many. 
So today in our episode of My India, we will take you to one such darga in Muzaffarpur city of Bihar, which has been uniting people of all religions for years. Take a look. Communal harmony is a required facet for maintaining peace and tranquility in a multicultural and diverse society like India. For this, the social fabric of the country has to be nurtured by connecting all individuals from all spheres with one another. A major role in connecting individuals of different religious communities and bringing them under one roof in Muzaffarpur district of Bihar is done by the Darka of Khwaja Hazi Asghar Hussain Khan. <laughs> होके सुखी होके जाता है यहां कोई भेदभाव नहीं है हिंदू मुसलमान सब एक पैटर्न पर है यहां कोई भी भोज भात होता है सब मिलके खाते हैं बनवाते हैं यहां किसी तरह का ये नहीं भेदभाव नहीं है यहां सब एक समान also known as Kambal Shah among his devotees, the 150 years old Darga is situated in the old market area of the city near the police station. It is believed that the saint came to Muzaffarpur in the year 1883 and his tomb was built in year 1903. It is believed that the Sufi saint fulfills the wishes of all those who come here from different corners of the country. People of all religions have deep faith in the saint who throughout his entire life worked for the welfare of humanity. This is Dr. Kambal Salamatullah. When he came here in 1883, when he came here, there was no one in this village. There was no one in any way of the Hindu, Muslim, and Sikhi. Everyone was in the same way, and was in the same way. और दाता के यहाँ सब का आना जाना है कोई यहाँ बड़ा छोटा नहीं है सब भाई भाई हैं और सब आपस में मिल के आते हैं और सब दाता के दरबार में माथा टेकते हैं और उनकी मन्नत पूरी होती है तो वो लोग चादर चढ़ाते हैं सबसे बड़ी मिसाल ये है और यहाँ इस शहर के अंदर जितने जाति के धर्म के लोग रहते हैं सब एक दूसरे के दुख सुख या त्यौहार उनका होता है उसमें सब एक साथ मिल मनाते हैं since ages, the Sufi saints like Hazrat Khwaja Hazi Asghar Hussain have propagated the message of spiritualism and harmony in our country, and their teachings are still playing a significant role in strengthening the threat of secularism. Now, a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Anbu Rajasekhar, a Tamil filmmaker in India's southern Chennai city, has established a world record for making the world's shortest movie with duration of just 5 seconds. The film Be Pretty showcases a man entering a house and a dog starts barking, reminding him to wear a mask. Actually, uh, I have made a shortest film, Be Pretty. Uh, COVID-19 is locked down for all, but my mind was free. Um, beauty means not only showing the face, um, but also social beauty. Uh, in this five seconds, uh, I have narrated a dog will give you a message, will not identify a man without a mask. Rajasekhar made the film on his phone during the lockdown period and after learning about the previous record of a seven seconds movie, he compressed the duration and edited it without disturbing its concept. The previous record was held by an American movie, Soldier Boy, with duration of 7 seconds. Authorities in India's southern Mangaluru city introduced a water desalination machine to turn salty seawater into drinkable water. The machine has the capacity to convert 140 litres of water per hour. It takes seawater or any other saline water and purifies it by sucking water from the water body and sending it to desalination unit for purification. It takes 
sea water or lake water or river water and purifies it and sea water it desalinated and it produces 140 liters per hour uh, what it does is the pressure supply unit sucks the water from the ocean or lake or river it pre-filter it sends it to the uh, desalination unit where it is desalinated and you get fresh water the machine will prove to be beneficial for fishermen who go out in the sea for long period of time and face water shortage during their stay. Once covered with heaps of garbage and notorious for unpleasant smell, Mahim Beach of India's financial capital Mumbai got a complete environment-friendly makeover and opened for public. The beach cleaned off eco-damaging garbage and now houses a viewing gallery for visitors where they can enjoy the view of city skyline and Arabian Sea. Bombay being right at the coastal front, it's still not known for its beaches. You know, if you see other places right on the Konkan coast, be it Goa or be it anything else, it's so beautiful and it's known for it. But we are not known for it just because it's pretty dirty and people don't keep it well. But looking at this beach, it's so beautifully kept, it's so clean that you actually feel like staying here, you know, spending some time here, getting the fresh air. So it's really well done and it should be like this. And I think it's the part of the citizens to keep it clean. You know, it's been done from the BMC, now we have to just take it forward. Turning it into a plastic-free zone, an open gym at the beach is also open. The gym is completely wooden instead of being coated by harmful chemical paints. Another 5 feet of sand has also been spread across the length of the beach after cleaning because of the erosion at the shore and several trees are also planted. India is a home to a number of religions, castes and ethnicities that reside here peacefully. Examples of this peaceful coexistence could be seen in every nook and corner of the country. Today, we will see one such example from Aligarh city of Uttar Pradesh, whose tower bolt polishing industry has been showcasing a picture of united India. India has always been a land of peaceful coexistence and a multicultural societal framework. Be it any state, city or territory, people of different religions have been presiding harmoniously. One such city is Aligarh in the northern state of Uttar Pradesh, whose centuries-old tar bolt polishing industry is famous all around the world. Apart from producing world-class products, the industry presents a unique example of communal harmony in the country. We have a Muslim community and it is a good job and it is a very old staff. We have a lot of relations with everyone. और इसमें हमारा नाम भी मशहूर है बड़ी बड़ी दूर हमारा नाम से चटकनी जाती है काम के दौरान तो बहुत अच्छा माहौल रहता है ईद के टाइम पे ईद मनती है बढ़िया हमारी और हम उनके यहाँ जाते हैं और दिवाली के टाइम पे दिवाली मनती है होली के टाइम पे होली मनती है हमें तो ये मालूम ही नहीं पड़ता हम तो सभी तरह के लोगों के टच में और हर तरीके का मतलब त्यौहारों में रुचि लेते हैं Aligarh has a mixed population of Hindus and Muslims and they have been working together since ages to make this industry stronger by the day. Since ages, Hindus and Muslims have thrived together due to their bond of love and their passion for their work. This passion has taught them to live together harmoniously. The city's lock making and statue making industries also present a similar picture of the bond of brotherhood shared by the two communities. This wave of brotherhood has affected everyone in the city and people of different religions reside together with utmost love and peace. The thing is that our Hindus are Muslims, but their relationship is very big. Whenever there is any need for anything, they don't do anything. मदद करते हैं और लॉकडाउन में भी बहुत साथ दिया है कभी दिक्कत आई है तो परेशानी नहीं आने दी और हमारे फैक्ट्री वाले जो लोग हैं हिंदू भाई वो भी सब सही हैं सब मेल मिलाव वाले हैं कोई ऐसा नहीं है कि लड़ाई झगड़ा वाला आदमी हो पीसफुल को एक्सिस्टेंस एंड रिकॉर्ड फॉर अदर रिलिजन्स इज एन इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ द इंडियन एथोस एंड एग्जाम्पल्स लाइक दिस ब्यूटिफुली पोर्ट्रे दंट्रीज हारमोनियस नेचर
Environment conservation has become the need of the hour. Various individuals and organizations around the world are working towards the cause by invention and introduction of eco-friendly products. In Pune city of Maharashtra, an entrepreneur is upcycling plastic waste and creating beautiful handloom products from them. Take a look. Who could have thought that plastic waste could be converted into something that is equally useful as well as beautiful. Nandan Bhatt, a Pune-based Kashmiri entrepreneur, has carved a niche for himself by an idea that turned him into a successful entrepreneur and is also contributing toward environment conservation. Bhatt's initiative named as Ecokari produces valuable accessories from single-use plastic waste. Ecokari is a social enterprise. Hai. जिसको हमने दो उद्देश्यों के लिए स्टार्ट किया था पहला वाला हमको पर्यावरण की कंजर्विंग द एनवायरनमेंट करना है और दूसरा वाला हमने यहाँ पे जितने भी वुमेन एंड यूथ है उनको लाइवलीहुड एनेबल करने के लिए किया था इको कारी का जो एक्चुअली शब्द है अगर आप देखेंगे तो दो वर्ड्स का मिलन है इको और कारी तो इको इको फ्रेंडली से लिया हमने और कारी कारीगरी से लिया हुआ है तो हम यही दो चीज़ों पर काम कर रहे हैं कि हम पर्यावरण को बचाना चाहते हैं और कारीगरी का मतलब हम आर्टिजन को क्रिएट कर रहे हैं Bhat used to work as a consultant for a CSR project in a company. He gave up his job in 2013 and got the idea of starting his own company. With the motto of humanizing fashion, Ecokari creates beautiful bags, home decor items, table mats, cushion covers, laptop bags and more. Bhat's company follows the principle of vocal for local by using charkhas and weaving ready to use plastic waste. Bhat and his colleagues chose a couple of villages around Hinjavadi near a Pavana dam. In Pune, after conducting a survey and stall hand loom units at villagers homes. टोटल प्लास्टिक अभी हमारे पास 400 से 500 किलो तक हम अपसाइकिल कर पा रहे हैं क्योंकि हम हैंडलूम पे काम करते हैं तो हैंड हैंडीक्राफ्ट के सेक्शन में आता है जिसमें आपका वॉल्यूम उतना ज़्यादा नहीं है बट क्योंकि हम रोजगार पे भी काम करते हैं कि हमको बहुत सारे लोग महिलाओं को और यूथ को नौकरी देनी है तो इसलिए वो चार से पाँच किलो पर है पर जितना हम ज़्यादा इसको बढ़ाएंगे जितने एक्स्ट्रा और ऐसे प्लांट्स आएंगे तो इसका हमारा जो स्केल है वो बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ेगा प्रोडक्ट्स uh, में हम एक्चुअली कैटेगरीज में काम करते हैं तो हमारा जो पहला वाला कैटेगरी है वो बैग्स एंड एक्सेसरीज का जिसमें आपको बैग स्टोर्स वोमेन के शोल्डर बैग्स वो मिलते हैं फिर हम ऑफिस स्टेशनरी में काम करते हैं जिसमें आपको बैग पैक ऑफिस के लैपटॉप बैग्स लैपटॉप स्लीव वो सारे करते हैं फिर होम डेकोर के प्रोडक्ट्स हैं जैसे आप अपने टेबल मैथ टेबल रनर्स छोटे प्लांटर्स और पिलो कवर्स ऐसे प्रोडक्ट्स बनाते हैं इको कारीज रोल इन प्रोटेक्टिंग द एनवायरमेंट इज प्रेज They are upcycling 10 to 15000 waste plastic bags per month which is close to a ton of waste plastic from which around 2000 to 3000 fashion accessories are manufactured from this material every month Next we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section World in Focus Japanese global transportation company NYK has launched electronic money platform Marco Pay for seafarers. Payment of salary by Marco Pay has begun this year. It is being used for the first time anywhere in the world. This electronic money is expected to solve the problems about cash in the ship. The Marco Pay の取り組みここには二つの背景がございます。一つにはですね、戦場の現金、この課題の解決、船の上ではですね、外国人船員のほとんどの方が、給の一部を現金で船の上で受け取られております、その結果、多額のですね、現金が船の上に滞留するという状況になっております、この戦場で渡される給与、また長い契約期間、乗船期間の間、そのお金を管理して、家族とやり取りし、ちゃんと本国に持ち帰ると、そういったその現金の課題。それに加えましてフィリピン人並びに外国人船員さんの持つ経済的なポテンシャルそれと合わせましたその彼らのポテンシャルに対するその現状そのギャップの課題この2つの大きな課題を解決したいと思ってこのマルコペイという取り組みを進めてまいりました。In future, Marco Pay will expand its services by adding loan service, introduction of insurance, medical treatment service, and real estate. 
it will be economic spare for seafarer まだ始まったばかりではあるんですけれどもやはりその船の上で6ヶ月から10ヶ月間そういった長い期間仕事に従事するでその間各国に寄港してもですね今このコロナバンデミックによってなかなか銀行へですとか金融サービスにアクセスできないそういった状況の中でこの携帯電話を通じて家族への送金ができたり戦場で受け取る給与の一部というのを電子的に受け取って他人とやり取りできるということはこれは非常にですねあの有用だということであのいい反応をいただいておりますまたこのサービスに対する期待というのもいただいておりましてえー、まあこれをもっとどんどん使っていきたいというような声ですとか、えー、このサービスを使って、えー、いろんなファイナンシャルサービスにアクセスしたいとそういったようなご要望をいただいております。NYK plans to expand Marco Bay operations in other Asian countries such as Myanmar in the future. The company aims to bring happiness for seafarers through Marco Bay. It looks like a bus that has taken a wrong turning as the vehicle speeds down a slipway into the river sea, scattering swans and prompting screams from the passengers. But when the splash subsides, the bus floats serenely along the river. This is one of the French capital's newest tourist attractions, an amphibious bus that drives along the city streets and then converts instantly into a river-going pleasure boat. These amphibious tour buses are commonly known as ducks and have been used for years to ferry tourists around other cities in the world. The version of amphibious buses in use in Paris is a new purpose-built design constructed largely in France and according to its operators it is the first amphibious vehicle to gain a license to carry tourists on the road and waterways of Paris. The tours have been run since this summer by a firm called Canards de Paris, French for Ducks of Paris. Voilà, donc là vous pouvez voir, il a un avant en forme de, de proue de bateau hein, pour, le, pour le permettre d'avancer dans l'eau plus facilement que si c'était un, un avant de bus trop carré hein, qui, le, qui le freinerait. Voilà, ici on a l'échelle d'embarquement hein, qui nous permet donc de, de faire monter les passagers hein, parce que la particularité par rapport aux autocars classiques c'est qu'on a un, un sol particulièrement haut pour être vraiment le plus éloigné possible de l'eau pour, pour des questions de sécurité. On an excursion this week, the vehicle in conventional bus mode carried passengers past sites including the Arc de Trump and the Eiffel Tower. The Nippon Foundation is keen to take action to dig up challenges and cover loopholes in the administrative policy. Its activities covered a wide range including current problem in Japan and historical discriminatory prejudice around the world. The Nippon Foundation made investigation about the awareness about 18-year-old youth on various themes. The 39th theme refers to sexual knowledge. 18歳の意識視聴者をなぜやるか。あ、これはあの日本は18歳で投票権を与えるようにいたしました。これからの時代を担う若者たちがどのようなものの考え方をしどのような行動をしていくかということは大変重要なことでございますし回答を分析してですねやはり政策に生かしていく必要があるとしたがって私はこれは10年間同じ質問を同じ時期に時系列的にきちっとやっていきたいと思っております。The Nippon Foundation's activities are spreading around the world. The most representative initiative is to support people suffering from epidemics and disabilities. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the Nippon Foundation provided temporary hospital beds to fulfill the need of urgent medical requirements. The Nippon Foundation declares to be a social innovation hub. Chairman Yohei Sasakawa's strong leadership has given hope to many people around the world. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at nin.com. I'm your host Skyrim and it's goodbye from the entire production team. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.